I'm Sheriff Bobby Schultz of Gilchrist County, and thank y'all for being here today. I know everybody's been anxiously awaiting some of the, uh, the details from what happened on Memorial Day weekend at Jenny Springs, and so we're here to try to fill you in on, on some of the things that you may or may not know. What you need to know, and I'm not sure if Lieutenant Weatherford told you or not, but there is, a, on Memorial Day weekend, we had two shootings. So there's two separate incidents. The first uh, was worked by the Gilchrist County Sheriff's Office with conjun in conjunction with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. We depleted our resources very quickly during the first investigation, which required the Florida Department of Law Enforcement to take over the second shooting incident. So when you're asking your questions, please understand, if you have a question at the end of this thing, make sure you, you talk about the specific case that you're asking for. Do you understand what I'm saying? So there's two cases. One that happened in the early morning of, on Friday, late hours of Friday, the late hours on Saturday. To set, kind of set the stage for what we were dealing with, you're at, this is a, Jenny Springs is a campground, and we were dealing with upwards of uh, attendees of 20,000 people. So when you arrived on scene, it was more like a raid party than it was a campground. With that being said, the Gilchrist County Sheriff's Office received a call, and you'll hear from Sergeant Benita Rowland in a minute. She'll give you some details. Uh, we did everything that we could to get a successful conclusion on this case, and I'll let her explain the details. But what I am here to tell you on the first shooting that we was able to arrest this gentleman, Fisher Dalton Watts, 18 years old, date of birth 4-12 of 2006, out of St. Mary's, Georgia, and he is charged on first degree murder. It took a lot of work to get to that point. And we're not done with the investigation. So at this, I'm, I'm going to come up and say a few words in a, in a little bit, but I'm going to turn the time over to Sergeant Benita Rowland, who's in charge of our investigation unit, to give you some more details about that night. Sergeant Rowland. Hey, good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. Uh, just give you a brief. Um, at approximately 12.39 a.m. Uh, this early Saturday morning on the 25th, we responded to a person shot call at Jenny Springs. And the shooting was reported to be near the bathhouse area at Beaver Landing, which is towards the east, far east end of the, of the park. Uh, we arrived on scene and located a white male deceased on the ground uh, near the Beaver Landing bathhouses. Uh, the victim was identified as Cody Edward Stewart out of Jacksonville. A crime scene was established and two suspects were quickly identified by several witnesses. Investigation repeal, revealed that opposing parties had engaged in two separate physical altercations within an hour or two prior to the shooting. Uh, witnesses reported that the um, altercations they felt were resolved and then about an hour later, uh, shooting occurs. Um, Life-saving efforts were attempted on scene, but Mr. Stewart um, was declared as deceased on scene. First suspect, Dallas Watts, out of St. Mary's, Georgia, was taken into custody on scene, and he is currently housed at the Gilchrist County Jail. He is charged with possession of a firearm by a convicted felon and resisting arrest without violence. The second suspect is Dallas's brother. His name is Fisher Watts. She saw the photo of him. He fled the scene back to Georgia. At approximately 9.30 p.m. on the 25th, we had an arrest warrant in hand for him, and he was charged with first-degree premeditated murder. Yesterday afternoon, Fisher Watch was taken into custody at the Camden County Sheriff's Office in Camden County, Georgia, uh, where he awaits extradition back to Gilchrist County. Um, we would like to personally thank every agency that assisted us with this. There were thousands and thousands of people there, and we had a very large crime scene to work. Um, People, for the most part, were very understanding in the amount of time that it took us to process this. Um, and people came forward with very pertinent information that allowed us to make arrests and have warrants in hand in 21 hours in this case. Um, we're pretty proud of that. Um, the investigation uh, into this case is still ongoing, as the sheriff said. In today's world of technology, everybody has a cell phone. Everybody's taking videos and photos, and a lot of that was provided to us. Um, again, as it's ongoing, I would like to personally urge anyone in the public that was there as a, as a witness who may have additional photos, videos, anything that may help us as we continue this investigation, to please come forward. 
Thank you. And Sergeant Rowland touched on, there was lots of agencies involved in this, uh, this investigation from the first shooting to the second shooting. Uh, Florida Department of Law Enforcement responded very quickly to both incidents. As, as I said, they are actually the agency in charge of the second shooting. We had uh, Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission there helping us, the Florida Highway Patrol, Gilchrist County uh, Emergency Medical Services and Fire Rescue, uh, Gilchrist County Emergency Management, the Florida, the Eighth Judicial Circuit State Attorney's Office was also uh, heavily involved in this, and uh, lots of other agencies from the Alachua County Sheriff's Office, uh, uh, Levy County Sheriff's Office offering support, the Dixie County Sheriff's Office under uh, direction of Sheriff Darby Butler, and Sheriff Mark Hunter from the Columbia County Sheriff's Office sent assets to help us on Saturday to can do a uh, crime scene security. We thank all of our partnering agencies because we tell everybody we're one team, one mission. But simply put, is we're all working together to make our communities a safer place to live, work, and raise families. And these men and women uh, deserve a lot of thanks. And some very, I've been doing this for 33 years. And the scene that I went to Saturday night was. Uh, it would bring any agency, any agency, a lot of challenges. So I'm very proud of the work they did. Uh, now I'd like to uh, ask uh, Will Porter, the special agent in charge of the Florida field office, Gainesville Florida field office, to talk about the second shooting. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Will Porter. I'm the resident agent in charge of the Gainesville field office uh, here at FDLE. Uh, Saturday night of around 1130 we were called to a shooting at Jenny Springs it's the second one within you know two days uh, we had agents respond to investigate the, sh uh, the shooting and our forensic scientists uh, responded to uh, process the scene and collect evidence uh, all that in conjunction working with our partners at the Gilchrist County Sheriff's Office uh, the investigation revealed that there was uh, an altercation that took place uh, near one of the campgrounds uh, there was a large fight involving multiple subjects. At some point during the fight, uh, someone, our suspect, uh, pulled out a gun and shot into the crowd, uh, unfortunately hitting three uh, innocent bystanders that were not involved in the fight. Uh, two two of, the, uh, of the victims were treated and released with minor injuries. Uh, one is uh, currently in the hospital with very serious injuries, very serious condition. Uh, we have developed a, a sus or suspects in this case uh, and we're continuing to work our investigation our investigation is still ongoing uh, I know there was a lot of people there it was a huge crowd uh, there's other people that that we know that witnessed this that that fled the area there's people that have videos and people that saw things with their own eyes we urge them to please call us please call the FDLE Gainesville field office at 386-462-9975 Thank you. And I can't ever state the, the appreciation we have for the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. As a small rural county, uh, we, we rely on the, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement to come and help us out in situations like this. And uh, they never, never cease to amaze me with the professionalism and the ability to come respond to us anytime we ask. My portion is going to be concluded here in just a second. but. There's a lot of things that we can control in this world, and there's a lot of things I can control in Gilchrist County. But the one thing that I can't control is who comes here. I can't control uh, how much uh, intoxicants that people consume. I can't control the type of people that would come to Gilchrist County. But you can rest assured, well, I can't control those things. What we can control are people like this that come into our county And wreak havoc here and we're, we will pursue them. We're going to investigate them, we're going to hunt them down, and we're going to put them in jail and hold them accountable. That's what happens. I can't control what other people do, but I can certainly control once they make a poor decision of what we're going to do. At this time I'm going to turn it over to Chief Robert Willis. He's the undersheriff here. Uh, also on the, sta on the stand up here with me so you'll know this is Christopher Keel, investigator for Sheriff's Office. Special Agent or Agent Yoli Carbia from Florida Department of Law Enforcement, and you met the other two individuals. Chief. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Robert Willis. I am the Undersheriff here. Um, I know that that probably didn't answer all of your questions, uh, and unfortunately, we're not going to be able to answer all of your questions. 
Uh, we will try to answer any questions and elaborate as much as we can within the parameters that we've already set forth as far as, you know, what's been discussed. Um, they are ongoing investigations. The sheriff touched on the, people, the type of people that come here. Um, the, the issue at Jenny Springs is not new. For those of you who are familiar with this area, uh, we've been dealing with an escalation of problems at that location for years. Uh, it has culminated with this weekend in two separate tragic events. Um, the density at that location and as the sheriff talked about, the excess and open use of intoxicants there is surely a recipe for disaster no matter where it is. Um, but it, this is what faces us here. Um, the sheriff's estimate of 20,000 was conservative. Uh, him and I were out there on Sunday all day and all night. And the estimation from Jenny Springs staff that was presented to us was between 20 and 30,000 people. Um, from the sheriff's office here, we had about 35. Uh, people on scene. We had FHP, we had FWC, we had Columbia County Sheriff's Office, Dixie County Sheriff's Office, uh, Florida Highway Patrol, uh, Florida Department of Law Enforcement, and we were still outmanned, so to speak. That place was a disaster as far as a crowd control situation. Um, the, the management at Jenny Springs was uh, cooperative on Sunday morning in closing the park for a period of time for the Florida Department of Law Enforcement to conduct their crime scene investigation and for us to look for the suspect that we believed at the time uh, was involved. And uh, at this time, I'll open the floor to questions. If I'm able to answer them, I will. If I'm not, then I'll direct it to somebody who may be able to from standing behind me. But please don't be offended if I tell you that's not something we can discuss. Yes, ma'am. Um, thank you. I'm Gabrielle Redford from the Dixie County Advocate. Um, thank you for taking my questions. I have two, if you don't mind. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Um, first, um, I'd like to thank everybody for their service to the county and our residents and pray for the victims involved. Thank you. Um, you spoke about the density at Jenny Springs. Jenny yes, Springs operates under a special use permit that caps the number of campers that they're allowed on their site on any given day. 20,000 to 30,000 is way over that number. Mm -hmm. Can you comment on any sort of enforcement that's been done in the past or that you'll look at going forward to try to keep them uh, operating under their allowable limits? I can tell you two things about that. First, and I don't know about what permits they operate under or what they don't specifically. Uh, however, what I can tell you is that they have two separate categories of patrons that attend that place. One is your campers and your overnight people. The other are what they call day pass people. So therefore, they're able to allow people in who are not occupying those campsites, which reaches the excess thresholds. Um, that is something that is candidly beyond the purview of the sheriff's office when it comes to what is enforceable and allowable when it comes for that. But we have told them their density and their in excess intoxicants is a problem. We are also going to be addressing that with the Board of County Commissioners to ask them, you know, the restaurants have regulations. The Blue Springs, Heart Springs, which they regulate, has regulations. And I realize that this is a private entity, and I honestly don't know the, I mean, I'm an attorney, and I don't know the answer to that question. Um, but it is a question that needs to be asked. I asked it of the management and ownership this weekend when I spoke with them, and Sheriff and I did, and I'm going to ask that question of the board. Uh, because I think those are the things that need, is definitely one of the things that needs to be addressed. Thank you. My second question is, um, the Sheriff at the start, talked about depleting your ability to uh, investigate. Can you go into a little more about what Absolutely. that level of depletion means? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I can. Um, right now, as the Gilchrist County Sheriff's Office stands, we have three investigators. One of them is on light duty. And we had a first-degree murder and an associated possession of a firearm by convicted felon involving people from out of state and hundreds of witnesses that were on scene that we had to get with. Now, that started late Friday and ran all the way through Friday night, all the way through Saturday, all the way into the early hours of Saturday evening. Those people are tied up, those two and a half investigators, and then we get a call where we have another shooting and an attempted murder plus multiple people, again, inside of this place with twenty to 30,000 people in an even larger crime scene than we had in the first in situation. 
So when, our, when I say our uh, resources were depleted, it was simply that we had people actively working on the first situation and an additional situation came into play where we just didn't have the resources to devote to that. And, and just to follow up and, and then I'll, I'll yield, um, you routinely deploy on the weekends at Jenny, I guess, uh, yes, ma'am. agents that Jenny Springs pays for. Some, yes. We, um, we, we uh, attribute and allocate other resources that are not paid for by Jenny Springs as well for the week leading up to Memorial Day weekend as well as during the weekend. So how many sheriff's officers did you have on the ground prior to starting at Friday afternoon? Let's Inside say. Jenny Springs? Inside we had Jenny. seven. Thank you. Yes, and, and to be clear, we do not regulate, we do not give security to the Springs itself. They, those deputies are there to assist with any calls of law enforcement need so they don't have to come from the county. And to put things in perspective, we have around 20,000 people that live in Gilchrist County. We have to cover that. And then we had 20,000 people in Jenny Springs. So our, our deputies are not patrolling Jenny Springs. It's a private area. They contract with us, gratefully, so it doesn't hurt our outside resources. However, when an incident like this happens, it's not enough. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Next. Yes, as far as the first shooting that happened, um, you said that there are opposing parties that got into a physical argument. That's correct. Do you, one, do you know what, what led up to the physical argument, like what, what, what they were talking about, and two, did the two parties know each other at all? Uh, it appears that they were uh, dispute it started over a parking place, uh, that someone had parked in an area that was uh, attached to an, the, another campsite and the two parties from the, the, well, the two groups from the campsites came together. As to their uh, connection, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, there is no known connection between the parties other than the coming together and fight over the parking spot. And as far as the two pictures that were held up, I'm assuming those were the brothers? That are the brothers, yes. Sir. Um, who made the decision to shut down the park Saturday night? Mm, well, the park was not shut down Saturday night. The park wasn't shut down until Sunday morning. Um, the decision was recommended by the sheriff's office uh, to the management and ownership of Jenny Springs, and they acquiesced to that request for us to be able to work the crime scene. Is there a reason that the park was not suggested to shut down Friday night after that first shooting? Oh, I believe it was. I just don't know that they were accommodating. Do you know how old the three victims were on Saturday night shooting? That is something I would have to defer to. Yeah, we're, we're, we're not old. ready to release any information regarding the victims from Saturday night shooting. Can you say where they're from? What is it? Can you say where they're from, no. the three victims? And they're all still alive? Yes. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. You mentioned, well, two things. Can you clarify the names of the suspects um, in second? In the first shooting? Yes, yes ma'am. Uh, and spell them for me? Yes. For us, and those, that information will be available. Uh, Lieutenant Weatherford, who's there in the back, he's our public information officer. He will be able to provide you with these individuals' names. Fisher, F-I-S-H-E-R, Dalton, D-A-L-T-O-N, Watts, W-A-T-T-S, is going to be your murderer. And Dallas Jordan Watts, Dallas Jordan, common spelling Watts, the same W A T T S, is going to be charged with possession of firearm by convicted felon and resisting an officer without violence. And These Fisher, pictures will be available as well as the names and date of birth from Lieutenant Weatherford at the conclusion of our presentation. Again, you mentioned many, many agencies provided mutual aid. Yes, ma'am. Was, um, was assistance requested from the agencies that allowed for that? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It was offered, but it was not taken uh, as that we had resources coming from other places at that time, but it was available, yes, ma'am. You said that the investigation, sorry, that that's the investigation is um, ongoing still in the first shooting, even though you've arrested two people. Are, that's are correct. There more arrests that will come? At this point, I don't, can't answer that. I don't know if they will or they will not, but until we, for two things. One, until we've completely looked into and attempted to con speak with everybody involved uh, and done all that, then we can't consider it closed. It would be premature to do so. Number two, even once we've concluded that, we turn what we, what we have into the state attorney's office and they may request us to do additional things. And until that is done and a charging decision is made, that case would not, that investigation would not be concluded. Anyone else? And just for clarification, I'm sorry. One more time. And just for clarification purposes, you recommended that the park be shut down after that first shooting, but it wasn't. I would anticipate that that was the case. Is that correct? 
You don't know. Okay, I can't say that for sure. I don't know. I would anticipate that it would be. Common sense would seem to dictate that, but I, far be it for me to presume common sense. I can tell you that I requested it with, in the presence of the sheriff on Sunday morning, uh, forcefully. If someone had a question over here, Jeff. Go ahead. I'm sure. Some agencies, when there's been a shooting and a murder, they send out a press release and says there's been a shooting at this place. Mm -hmm. The community is now safe. Don't worry more. Mm -hmm. But the first I learned about this wasn't until mm -hmm. both shootings were done. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it's so I'm mean, assuming your question is why was that done that way? Yeah, the policy, what's the policy? I can absolutely explain yeah. that to you, yes. I'm glad you asked that question because I want everybody to be aware of that. The, the, when the sheriff's office responds to a crime, whether it be a shooting, whether it be a stabbing, whether it be a rape, whether it be anything else, um, if there is a threat to the community that's ap apparent based on what we're dealing with and it doesn't seem to be something isolated, in, these, in both of these situations, I may, uh, even as to the second, these appear to be disputes between parties that escalated to violence that was contained to that particular area. Once that violence was concluded, Sure, there could have been additional people that were, you know, had potential problems, but there was no apparent threat or reasonably reasonable expectation of threat to any of the people, other people in the park, or especially the public at large. Had there been, we would have made notifications, we would have pushed out press releases, we would have used the other mechanisms in place, such as the uh, code red, which is a reverse telephone call. I know you're aware of that. Um, there's lots of other things that we would do, and we will always do that. If there is a threat to the community or anybody in the particular area or even at large, there would have been a notification. However, those things not being present, it is best then to report once there is something to report, somebody being arrested, someone being charged. Otherwise, there is there's no reason for it to be an ongoing morbid curiosity update. It just is something that when we have something to report, then we will. Let me ask yes, you, we obviously take very seriously our duties and responsibilities as law enforcement officers and what, who I have, have I've got to protect, which was everybody in that, in that park, and then the, our citizens. And to, in order to maintain the, the integrity of a case, I refuse. I refuse to coalesce, to feed a, a blurb on the news for people's interest. My number one priority is the Gilchrist County citizens and what's best for them. I will always be that way. And then, as the chief said, if something was going to, if we felt there was something better chance than not that somebody was at risk within the, the county or the park, we 100% would put that out. We've done it. I have a track record of doing that. I have been told I put out too much at times, and then I get told I don't put out enough. I, I respect the decision making and the recommendations of the boots on the ground. And we all agreed that there was not a uh, significant threat or a threat to the community at large. And therefore, to keep the integrity of the case and the investigation, we chose not to push out any more what, what we did. So I, I hope that answers the question. But as a general rule, that would be the, the procedure in which all cases are going to flow. Yes, sir, Chuck. Answer the question. Well. Yes. Oh, thank you. Yes, uh, I'll come back to you just one second. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Fourth of July is coming up, another big holiday weekend. Mm -hmm. Any, we already started thinking about plans, you know, security for... Yes, we have. For that holiday. Yes, we have. Um, and as I stated to begin with, there's been an escalation over the years. And it, it, this has been something, you know, that we never wanted to happen. We had hoped it never would. But this weekend was the harsh reality that more is necessary. And uh, I don't want it to be, appear to be a armed occupation on the northeast side of Gilchrist County, um, but I'm not going to say that that's been ruled out as an option. Um, there will be a heavy presence of Gilchrist County Sheriff's Office as well as other agencies that will be doing everything we can to prevent this type of activity from happening again. I keep interrupting the chief, but let me... <laughs> he always does that. Well, that's, that's why you have good teamwork. That's right, very much. The, uh, there was some a question here talking about what did we do, uh, how much, how much manpower we had at the at the scene at Jenny Springs. Please understand that we understand what we're dealing with, so we do take a proactive stance. Our stats on there, I believe, and I'm Lieutenant Weatherford can get it to you. We had over a hundred cases reported to us from the Jenny Springs area, a hundred in a three-day period. We also we understand there's a higher volume of traffic. We also are very well well aware that the High Springs Police Department, with the conjunction with the Latch County Sheriff's Office, does a lot of stuff to try to stop that flow 
on their side of the, of the county or that's their side of the, the line. But we also, we had traffic enforcement there as well. I believe we wrote uh, 90 or done 90 traffic stops, 98 traffic stops in a three-day period. I, we're, we're proactive. We can't stop, as I told you before, we can't stop all the bad things from happening. But with the resources that we have, and you have to understand, I got asked a question a while back, why don't you bring other counties in? Well, we, we've done that in the past. And sometimes they, they have enough resources to send us, and then they have their own issues within their jurisdictions. So we do the best that we can with what we have, and, uh, we're, and we're going to continue, July 4th being no different. We're going to make sure that with what we have, we'll do what we can. Just a real quick, and, you know, I teach the sheriff about, you know, the, the back and forth that him and I do is on a regular basis, and that is the best way to come up with solutions to problems, is to have lots of people looking at them. The collective, you know, efforts that you see standing behind me of Florida Department of Law Enforcement, Investigations, Administration, and the different uh, departments that came to help us is a prime example of why Sheriff Schultz is effective at what he's doing. What he's doing is something that I believe in, which is why I'm here. Um, and it has shown that it is effective, especially over this weekend. This weekend was the perfect storm of disaster that came to Gilchrist County. And the collective efforts and the process and procedure that we have attempted to instill here together was effective. It, was, it is a, as the sheriff said, a situation that would have drowned almost any agency, but especially a small agency like us. And we, we withstood the storm, and we, and like, you know, Sergeant Rowland said, within 21 hours, they had a, a warrant for a first-degree murder. You know, everybody's seen the show on TV, the first 48. On Gilchrist, it's the first 21. <laughs> um, we get things done, and it's because of Sheriff Schultz's leadership and the cooperation. So uh, you had a question, sir. Yeah, and it goes back to mm -hmm. finding that murder suspect. You said he fled to St. Mary's, Georgia. Yes, sir. How, one, where was he found? And two, if you can explain some of the investigative tools that were used to track him down and get him. As to the investigative tools, I'm not going to get into that. Um, as to where he was found, I don't know. All I can tell you is he is in the custody of the, of the Camden. Camden County up there. Um, it is of note that both of the brothers have criminal histories from the state of Georgia as well. Yes, ma'am. Um, thank you again. Um, I happened to be there at 11, starting at 11.30 Saturday night. Just oh, wow. And at that time, Deputy Sanders had done a soft closure, I guess is what you're saying, because staff was turning everybody mm -hmm. around. And what people were doing then when they were turned around at the gate is they were parking along Denny Springs Road, leaving their cars, mm -hmm. and then walking in. Mm -hmm. um, so you saw firsthand the chaos and the... I have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that... I deliver donuts to my friends who run the overnight when I come back from Gainesville. So I, I've seen over the years that I've lived here, Jimmy Springs in the overnight. I have never seen anything as chaotic and dense as what I witnessed on Saturday. And so I just wanted to clarify that that, that was just a soft closure. Yes. And, and so then people still had access to Jenny Springs until the hard closure in the morning. That is correct. Yes, ma'am. Thank ma you for clarifying that. Any other questions? Jeff? <clears throat> yes, sir. For the sheriff. So one team, one mission goes all over to Georgia, too. Yes, it does. Absolutely. Uh, Go ahead. I, 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 that is well stated. It's not just Georgia. It's, it's, it's nationwide. I'm going to tell you something. Um, we enjoy a very friendly relationship with law enforcement here in Gilchrist County. I come from places that doesn't necessarily have that same relationship with the community. Um, but the philosophy that we're employing here and that we embrace is definitely something that we share with all of our law enforcement partners and community partners throughout the country. I mean, I've had him, hey, we've had this sheriff come up, oh, I know so-and-so up there, let me give him a call. And his communication skills and his connections with people through his philosophy in law enforcement have allowed us to be a better, safer place. And it's, it is a, it's a good feeling to know, that uh, even on these cases, I think that uh, Will, a uh, special agent in charge of the field office would admit, we don't always get everything right. We don't pretend to. We don't pretend that we're perfect, but we do have, we do everything we can to do our, do our job to the best of our ability. And the one team, one mission philosophy that we've implemented isn't just related to law enforcement, it's to our community. Uh, I believe that you've received a lot of information from citizens outside of Gilchrist County, within Gilchrist County, because they want to do what's right. 
there's more good in this world than there is bad. And we enjoy in Gilchrist County a lot of, we don't have to go through a lot of the issues some of these larger counties and jurisdictions have. We have a great county, and we don't want this mess here. It was thrown upon us. There's really not too much that we can do about it. As a law enforcement agency, I've heard all these other ideas and suggestions. I will not stomp on somebody's constitutional rights for anything. However, where there is a problem, I believe that there's a solution. And that's what we're going to work very hard with with the county, the property owners, and, and anything else that comes up. That's just a philosophy. I'm just very grateful that we have the relationship with uh, Agent Porter and his staff and the other sheriffs and the other police chiefs in this area that if they need, a pro need help, we're coming. They know that. At 2 o'clock in the morning, we had uh, 20 different agencies coming to us for no other reason because we asked it. They came. And that's the kind of, in, in north central Florida, that's the kind of law enforcement you have. And you need to understand that while we're not perfect, we have a perfect love for what we do. And we're going to continue doing that to the best of our ability. And we're going to figure this out to the best uh, to, that we know how to do. And we're going to provide safety where in those jurisdictions that we have dominion over. So, Chief? If there's no other questions, we're going to conclude this uh, press conference at this time. Uh, again, Lieutenant Weatherford, the public information officer, is here, and he'll be able to provide you with any uh, details or, or things you need. Do you have one more question? Or okay. You good? okay. Can Sergeant Bowen spell her name for us? Please? Absolutely. Step forward and <laughs> identify yourself. So, the first name is Benita, B E N I T A. Last name is Rolling, R O L L I N G. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.